Tom Prince with Western New York Athletics, and you are at our next edition of the Western New York Athletics Coaches Corner. And be more excited to talk to the next three coaches that we have here. Very prominent teams here in Western New York have got some top players here in Western New York, and we're going to get a chance to talk about all that and more here today. So first, let's go some, some introductions. My first coach from Eden, Alexis Nasca, representing Eden. Coach over at Will South, Julie Murphy over at Will South, and a coach at Clarence, Tan Banizak over at Clarence. Guys, I couldn't be more than happy to have you on the show today. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us, Tom. Absolutely. So my first question is, before we get into the various questions here, is just how are you guys doing? How are you holding up in all this? I mean, it's been mentally draining for all of us. We're all confined in the homes. How are you holding up? Alexis, how about yourself? Doing all right. You know, I feel like everybody, I, I ask everybody this question, my kids, every time I talk to them, like, oh, how are you holding up? I know it's getting old, but how are you holding up? Um, I, I help run a gym. I run a softball performance facility in Orchard Park. So it's really just trying to keep everybody engaged, you know, along with my team and, and, you know, working with coaches to keep their kids engaged and, it's just, it's, it's still busy, so I'm not going too crazy yet. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, it is. The more we can stay busy, the better that we are. But I could absolutely see just where, and your players, I know they're dying to just get out there and do something. So and you, if you're also doing training on the side, I'm sure you're getting more than enough texts and emails and phone calls. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so. Julie, how are you holding up? You know, you have, you have good, good moments and bad moments, I think. Um, I think it's been, it's hard to believe I, I'm a financial play, uh, planner during the day. So I talk to a lot of people throughout the day um, going through kind of that roller coaster um, of the stock market. But I think as a whole, just touching base and reaching out to the players, it's, it's emotional. And I, I keep, you know, you check in with as many people as possible just to make sure that they're doing okay. Um, I think it's just mentally challenging. Um, obviously the physical part of all of this is kind of taken out the softball for the players, but, um, I think just mentally just checking in with them, um, helps both, I think the coaches and the players. Um, but you know, I think everyone, you got to wake up and really just continue to tell yourself to focus on the positives, health, we've got our families, um, that sort of thing. And kind of what keeps me going is just knowing that someone out there is going through a lot worse time. Um, so it kind of pushes me through the day. And I'll make sure I can uh, contact you when I need that financial advice too, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, Todd, how are you holding up? Uh, we're doing well. Um, I stay busy each day. You know, being a teacher, we're writing our lessons and getting them out to the kids online. So that takes a part of the day. Uh, reaching out to the players. Um, you know, they get back to you. Some of them do. Not all of them all the time. They're, uh, they're all doing well, they, you know. I try not to dwell on missing the season with them so that they don't, you know, feel worse about it. Um, I think the hardest part of the day for me is when it's time to go outside and, and you know, get your exercise in for the day. And uh, it's a nice day. And then I, you know, uh, you go for your walk or your run for an hour. And then you're thinking, sitting there thinking, well, we could, we should be playing. You know, it's a little cool, but we should be playing or we could be playing and, and we're not. So I, I think that's what it hits me most. But we're hanging in there. Everybody's doing well here. So, and the girls are doing well. well and especially if we had those 60 degree days. At, at least a little better. We got it, what, it started at 28 degrees today. But I mean, uh, yeah. at least it's not as nice as what it's been to drive us all absolutely crazy. But I know we're all dying to get outside. But listen, let's get right into the questions right here. So, my first question that I have for each of you is to the viewer that says softball and baseball are very similar. How would you explain the true differences of the game of softball compared to baseball? Julie, let's start off with yourself. Um, it, I've had actually the, uh, the benefit of coaching um, travel softball with a baseball, um, a baseball guy. So I kind of get both sides of it um, and we talk it out a little bit. I think one of the main difference, I think the, that he's always amazed with and I'm always amazed with is just the pitching rotation. Um, I could have, you know, a varsity and obviously so, so many programs have their, their horse that they could play, you know, really in a high school season, they, they play every day and they can throw every day. 
Um, in that case, I think that the big difference with baseball is just the pitching rotation. Um, and now obviously there's that pitch count that um, New York State and I think probably other states have um, implemented. But um, as many similarities as there are, um, and I do think we're tar like in the last five years, you're probably starting to teach girls how to throw similar to how um, a major league baseball pitcher throws. So I think there's a lot of similarities. Um, I'm a big coach with like the short game. I don't think the baseball, uh, the baseball side of it uses a ton of short game. You see a little bit here, more and there, uh, more and more. But um, I would say the pitching in the short game for me is like a major difference and just kind of that sort of tactic. We kind of go back and forth all throughout the summer um, of what we should be doing and just amazed at, again, the pitching side of it that, uh, that one pitcher can really throw the innings that they, um, that they manage all season. Todd, how would you answer that one? Well, it's kind of unique for me. I think I, I did coach travel baseball for a long time and I played baseball and then, you know, to go right in to do softball for all these years. I think I agree with Julie. One of the biggest differences is the short game and the bunting. Um, I used to try to incorporate that with my baseball teams. And of course the, the coaches helping me didn't understand it and didn't, they wanted to hit all the time. So but I think the short game and, um, the pitching, I agree with that. They, uh, you know, you can throw the same girl multiple games if you need to, uh, more than one games in a tournament on a day if you need to. But I think the overall speed of the game is faster. Uh, you know, you don't have as much time to react if you're playing on the, def on the defensive end. Uh, your, your catcher doesn't have as much time to react to throw a runner out. Um, but those are the biggest differences that I see, you know. Alexis, how would you answer that one? Yeah, I think Julie covered it pretty well. Um, the pitching is huge. You know, I, I'm lucky, lucky enough to have a pretty good staff, but I've definitely been on teams and been parts of teams where we've had one or two pitchers where, uh, you know, you kind of got to ride one. And even when you got double headers, you've got tournaments, you're playing multiple games in a day, and, you know, the same pitcher is going back to back and there's no regulation on how many pitches she can throw you know it's really just you know how is she performing how is she feeling hopefully you got uh, another pitcher in the bullpen to kind of pick her up if she's not feeling so great um for not performing as well as she could uh also you know the short game you know we i know some hitters in the major leagues you know they might resemble something of like a slap hit but you know just having a, a slapper in your lineup is it's huge. It could be deadly, you know, having that, that threat of a hitter that can hit for power from the left side, you know, lay down a bunt, drag bunt, you know, chop one right over a uh, third baseman's head, you know, put it exactly where she wants it. That's, that could be deadly if you've got a, a good slapper in your lineup, which you don't oh, That's really great. Like that. I, and I agree. Cause I, you hear a lot, a lot of coaches don't like to play small game, but I heard a great story from Coach Sen of, of um, Cataraugus Little Valley. He's uh, Coach Sen. Coach Sen just retired. He's one of the uh, winning. He is the one of the winningest coaches in Section Six history on the baseball side. And he told one of his best stories was telling a bunting story where he said they bunted somewhere like five, six times against this kid that couldn't. That was just throwing complete gas, and it was how he won the game. And it just shows that we probably don't look on the baseball side enough of the small ball, like exactly what you guys are talking about, which could be huge benefits to be able to win a baseball game. And now you're telling me the same exact thing. What a benefit to win a softball game to make sure that you've got every aspect of the game working for you. And that's hitting, that's small ball, that's pitching. It's all the different things that we're talking about and making sure it's prevalent each and every game out there for you. So those are great answers. Thanks for, uh, teaching us some of the little intricacies that are a little bit different for uh, softball. So my next question I have for you is, what will be the toughest thing to prepare for? If they turn around and say, we're going to have a season, but it's going to be a shortened season, and you may only have six practices to get your team ready to go if we go ahead and do something, what will be the toughest thing to prepare for? Todd, let's start with yourself on this one. I think the hardest thing for the kids to be ready for will be hitting live pitching. Um, you know, you use your scrimmages, you know, you use your practices, you know, even in the cage, you can hit off a pitcher, 
use your non-league games early. But uh, I think the pitchers will have an advantage even more so, you know, against the hitters because the hitters aren't, uh, you know, going to be used to hitting off the live pitching. Um, maybe pitcher location, putting the ball where they want when they want to move it around. Um, I think that'll be something. And simply knowing where you want to put your kids. My team is pretty young. I mean, I have some, some seniors that have been there a while, but most of us are young and making decisions on who's going to play where is going to be uh, a sit, uh, something that, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time. And if you jump right into your league games, you know, you want to win those league games. So, you know, you don't want to mess around that much, but you're going to have to try kids in places to see where you're going to be at the end. So, but my biggest thing I think would be getting those kids to hit off live pitching and, and, you know, splitting that practice time with that and working on situations, you know, defensive situations or offensive situations, things they, they don't do at home right now. Yeah. Especially bunting scenarios, you know, yeah. defense to bunt. Oh, no, no doubt about that. So, Alexis, how would you answer that one? So, I'd have to agree with uh, Todd on the, the whole live live hitting. You know, it's they can sit there and hit off their tee. Um, they can have, they can get soft tossing, front toss if they're lucky lucky enough to have setups like that. Um, but just getting that timing down and being able to see the different spins on the ball is really really tough uh, if you've been out of it for a little bit. Um, that's one thing that I communicated with my girls when we started, we were outside for the first day of practice and I'm like, all right, we're going to, we're going to be doing live hitting at least three times a week and, or two, two to three times a week. So um, we can, we can really be prepared. And then now they're kind of stuck without it. So that's going to be one of the tougher things if we do end up being able to play, hopefully we will be. <laughs> and um, I say, like the mental aspect of the game, you know, where, you know, practicing taking signs, you know, reading signs. Um, Cause I do have, I do have a few new girls this year um, that, you know, aren't familiar with um, how we kind of, how we call signs and, and I've got a new catcher and she, she's going to have to learn how to call pitches and kind of take, take those pitch calls for me and work with their, pitcher you know I've got a really young catcher coming in eighth grade and you know just building those relationships um, between an eighth grader and a junior is it I mean the girls are all really great and they all really get along but there is a, a certain relationship that needs to be uh, nurtured and developed and you know six days six practice days it might not necessarily be enough for that. Sure. Julie how would you answer that one? Um, I think they both make great points just about the live hitting and the situational stuff. But um, a big thing that I think um, Alexis was getting at is the chemistry. Uh, when you're like, especially with our spring that we have here, I think um, softball even more so and baseball, but um, you're in the gym with these girls for like five weeks. Sometimes um, occasionally you can get outside and more so now with turf fields and such, but um, the chemistry you have with girls that you're practicing six days a week, they're together for six days a week for almost five to six weeks at a time before you even get, get to play that game. Um, so I think the chemistry on the, uh, on the field matters um, and off the field. And then I think um, personally, I thought our off season with our pitchers, this was the strongest one, the most committed um, I've had in a while. I had five pitchers really on like really commit since November. Um, so little upsetting just obviously with what's gone what's gone on but I think their stamina too would be a concern for me just all of a sudden you know if you'd hope they're throwing a little bit um, at home but it can't you can't obviously recreate um, you know the the workouts they've had um, so I would say the the pitching side of it would be a huge um, concern and just making sure that as a team that their bodies are physically ready for it so the grind. <laughs> No, it makes total sense. And great answers right there, everybody. So now comes what I talk about the fun part of the program, right? This is where we actually get to talk about the makeup of your teams and exactly what, te what players are going to make up those teams and how they are going to be such a vital part of you taking the field and doing something special out there on the field. So first I'm going to start off. Let's go to Eden and talk to Alexis on this one. Alexis, you are a perennial powerhouse here in Western New York when it comes to softball. 
There's no doubt that you've got a great team that you're going to be putting there out in the field. Let's talk about the makeup of Eden and who, uh, who they are going to uh, go after this season. So um, I've got three seniors this year. Uh, we graduated two. Uh, we lost a couple girls. Um, we had a transfer. We had one kid. Um, I love her to death, but she decided that softball wasn't her favorite sport, which is unfortunate because she was a great player, um, and I'd take her back in a heartbeat. So, um, But our seniors this year are Katie Zimmerman, who plays second base, Sabrina, ba Sabrina Battleson. Um, she played right field for us last year, and she I am planning on – moving her to uh, center field because she's a, a great leader and she's got wheels and she can track a ball really well. And we've got Anna Mohan, um, who is going to be taking over the catching position and um, just really, really got a really great attitude, nice work ethic, um, and really meshes well with her pitchers. So that's good. Um, and my juniors this year are Marissa Calloway and Caitlin Schmitz. Both are stud pitchers, um, utility players. Marissa Calloway, when she's not pitching, she's mostly playing, playing third base, but I'm confident with her anywhere. Um, Caitlin, she is, uh, she's healthy this year, which is great. Last year we ran into a little bit of an issue with her shoulder, um, but we got her healthy and she's looking stronger than ever. And her mentality is just fantastic. Um, so those two are gonna be great. Uh, one, two punches. Um, then for sophomores, we've got Courtney Schmidt, who is also in my pitching staff. Uh, but when she's not pitching, she's going to be playing first base. Got a great stick on that kid. Hits the, bar, hits the ball so hard. <laughs> uh, Lydia Kobe, she's my shortstop. Sometimes we'll throw in, throw in the outfield. Really great, pretty kid. Um, we've got four new players uh, coming up this year, Evelyn Randolph, Maddie Baker, Crystal Singleton, and then an eighth grader, Haley Pompeo, who's going to be, um, we're going to be developing her into uh, a catcher. She's a strong kid. Um, she played varsity soccer this year. Um, so she's got the experience uh, in a varsity sport, and I think she's going to be able to mesh well with the girls and She's always asking how to get better, which is one of my favorite qualities in an athlete. <laughs> That's great. Alexis, have any of your players committed to play at the next level? Yeah, so Marissa Calloway, uh, one of my juniors, my pitcher, one of my pitchers, she actually committed to play at UB. Um, so not next year, but the year after, because she's still a junior. So that's really exciting. That's fantastic. Another D1 commit, no doubt about it. Yeah, staying local so I can go watch her. <laughs> Even better. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more there. So, all right, fantastic. Now let's go over to Will South. Julie, you've already talked about you've got some veteran pitching that's going to be coming back to a staff, right? You know that pitching is going to be huge when it comes to advancing anywhere, especially going on to the sectionals or even farther from there. Let's talk about the makeup of Will South and exactly what they're going to bring to the table this season. Actually, I have uh, I have a real good problem. I have uh, five five pitchers on the roster this year. So it was uh, like I said, the off season they did they definitely put their time in. Um, but I have five five seniors, um, two of which are senior pitchers. Um, my one pitcher, Alyssa Quagliana, she also um, when she wouldn't be pitching, she'd be kind of the captain of the outfield. Um, has been on the team since her freshman year. Great hitter. Um, last year, she was sidelined with a uh, wrist injury, so um, come to find out, she actually pitched in the Jerry Gettner tournament last year with a broken wrist, so she's that kind of kid that um, is just a real tough, uh, mentally tough, um, so excited to see um, what she could do. And then Danielle Graz um, is a five-year varsity, varsity player. Um, interesting enough, you know, I think pitchers, um, kind of the correlation with pitching and hitting. Um, she happens to be one of our best hitters. She led our um, offensive categories last year. She's uh, hits from the left side um, and hit cleanup for us last year. So she would log a ton of innings on the on the mound, um, and then probably find herself in the outfield as well. Uh, Elizabeth Fox has been also on the team. She's actually a five-year starter on varsity. Um, started as a catcher for the first two years. Um, it's kind of moved around. 
the last year found herself uh, at first base and would have, you know, will be starting at first base this year. Uh, hits for power. Um, just a real kid that in the off season, just you, you find her at a batting cage. That's just her softball's her thing and she works hard at it. So uh, rounding out our senior class is Julia Jacobs. And she is the type of kid that just walks in the gym with a smile on her face. She kind of brightens everyone's day and she's that teammate that everyone just really kind of turns to. Um, she just has such a positive energy to her. Um, she is second year varsity player and really can play anywhere. Even uh, she caught a little bit for us last year, um, but I could see her in the infield this year. So um, junior class, we have four juniors, um, all, all returning um, except one, Emily Pantera is a uh, new, new player. Uh, she pitches, she's our third pitcher, um, no particular order, but um, one of five pitchers. So she's also got a great bat watching her in the gym just the first six days or so. She can really hit the ball for power. Um, again, another energy kid, just always smiling. And uh, I think Alexis mentioned it too, just a kid that's always asking what, what she can do uh, to get better um, and improve her skills. So uh, fourth pitcher, I think, is our um, lefty, Kat Morris, is a second-year varsity player as a junior, and she's just another kid that um, just works works really hard, and you want to see her do well because of the effort she puts in and her attitude, and um, she's got a ton of spin. I think that lefty pitcher, I think everyone, um, any coach will it's just a huge asset to have on your team. Um, different look, different release point. Um, so she's real good with the spin um, and just a different look coming from that mound. Um, uh, Brianna Dewey is a third year varsity player. So she made it as a freshman and she is by far probably in our program, one of our fastest kids. Um, she hits from the left side. And again, Alexis said that triple threat, she can drag, bunt, slap. And um, I think last year, it was interesting. We went back and forth whether I wanted her to slap or hit away. She was more comfortable with hitting away at that point, and she got up and, you know, her leadoff hit was a, a hit away um, triple. So I'm like, okay, I think I'll hit away. Um, so she would uh, – I could see her playing the left side of the field, also very strong arm. So it was um, really looking forward for the future for her. And uh, Elizabeth Jackson. I coach uh, a lot of these kids in field hockey. She's just an excellent athlete. Um, she very quick in the outfield. Again, she's made it as a sophomore, um, so was looking for you know great things for her. My underclassmen, I think I've got um, five underclassmen this year, three sophomores, two freshmen, and I can't say enough about our future. I'm really got a good problem on uh, the sophomore class. I think it's one of my strongest tenth grade class I, classes I've had. I've got um, MJ Martin. Uh, Marissa Borelli and Olivia Ruggiero and they all are just those type of kids that have um, grown up playing softball and the mechanics the quickness their glove work um, so Olivia plays second base Marissa and MJ both left side uh, left side of the field and what I think a huge advantage to these kids is they not only um, can play infield but they could play outfield so um, my philosophy is you're out. If you can hit, I'm going to find a spot for you. Um, and I think, you know, I coach a younger travel girls. Um, my biggest takeaway to them or give, you know, I tell them is be able to play infield and outfield. Um, so just the athleticism from the sophomore class, um, really was, you know, looking forward for them for the future. And then our two new freshmen, um, happen to be a pitcher and a catcher, uh, Gia Ganji is my ninth grader and Sydney Fox happens to be Elizabeth Fox's sister. Um, Sydney Fox is a catcher, incredible power um, at the plate. Just was uh, real, almost uh, in a, her role, she knew her role this year is kind of, uh, I have a senior catcher, she's a freshman catcher, just learning the ropes, um, developing. Um, so hopefully she gets that opportunity and then steps in. Um, but again, just really, a real incredible power um, at the plate. And then Gia Ganji, um, she really is, I think, the future of South softball on the mound. Um, she puts in a ton of time. Pitching is what she wants to do, um, and, it, and it does. It shows. 
Um, so I'm happy and I'm real excited to have her the next four years too. So um, future looks bright and I'm excited. Nice, any commits? Yes, I have uh, on uh, my senior class, uh, Elizabeth Fox is committed at uh, the division two Seton Hill. Um, she'll, uh, you know, she was recruited as a first and third baseman there. Um, and then my, uh, my fifth senior, um, as I'm like looking at my sheet, my fifth senior that I mentioned was my starting catcher. <laughs> I, did, I failed to mention her, um, leave it to me to do that. So Abby Cruz, um, she's been a four year starter on varsity, um, incredible power, incredible leader. Um, I turn to her, she's my go-to player. Um, so she has uh, also committed to play at Cuca College. Um, so she'll be, those two players are taking their, um, their softball to the next level. Um, and then I can see for the junior and senior, uh, junior and sophomore, um, they'll be, I'll have some college softball players in the future too, so. Fantastic. So the question is, when do you have time for yourself? Let's see, travel coach, softball coach, travel, uh, school, plus field hockey. I don't know how you have time for yourself there. <laughs> Yeah, we got a, a 10 and 13 year old. They keep us busy. So we got all their travel sports and I coach majority of them. So I have good schedule control, which is nice. So I get it. So great. Now, Todd, let's go over to you. You are in a very tough division. When you talk about your division, it's game in, game out. You could have Orchard Park, Lancaster, Will North. It's a tough game every single time you guys are going to take the field. You've got some big players that we're going to be talking about, too. Add it with the youth that you've also talked about. You also are young at certain spots on the field. Let's talk about the makeup of Clarence. Well, we'll start off with uh, Leah Victor. She's our senior, <clears throat> fourth-year pitcher. Um, you know, it's kind of unfortunate not to get her senior year, but this is her, uh, this, this is her year. Um, you know, she's batted in the three-hole all four years for us. Um, She's uh she's the real deal on the mound. Um, then we have Kate Cioli who should play some middle infield for us. Um, Amelia Wells she'll play some outfield for us. Uh, she's good on the base paths. And uh, Amon Lawrence will probably play uh, play some play third base for us. Uh, she hits the ball well, also. Um, as far as the juniors go, we'll start off with Julianne Bolton. Uh, she's a third year starter for us. Uh, another great hitter, batted in the four hole for us all, all three years. Um, great pitcher. Uh, you know, it's one of those issues between Julianne and Leah. I don't know if you consider it an issue, but trying to please them both, get them the innings they want because they, they both can really throw. Um, but I guess that's kind of a good problem to have. Um, Mary Blazak in center field. Um, she just flies. Uh, she uh, steals all kinds of bases, makes all the plays, bats lead off. She's a junior, second year player for us. Um, Hannah Rosansky will catch behind the plate. Last year, unfortunately, she was hurt the entire season. Um, but so far this year, she's going to she's going to be our catcher. She's probably bat around the five hole, hits with power, uh, completely committed to the game. Uh, got some Division One programs looking at her. Uh, obviously undecided. So. Uh, She's a real deal there. Uh, another junior, Emily Giansani, will play some third base for us. She's, she would be our third pitcher as well. We'll get her some innings on the mound. Bella Bacho, uh, one of our slappers, play middle infield, shortstop, second base. Great kid. Uh, so far, all the kids are great kids. We have, They're all fun to be around. Um, Audrey Blar will play some outfield. Uh, another great kid, good communicator with me, committed. Um, Works real hard. Uh, should she should play some left field? Uh, move down to our sophomores. Uh, Emma Call. Uh, Emma Call could play many different positions. I'm, I'm unsure where she's going to play mostly. Um, she played some varsity basketball as a sophomore, which kind of gets her more ready for, for you know for varsity so or for varsity softball. Uh, good stick. Uh, great kid. Works super hard. Just I got to have her in the lineup somewhere. Uh, Ella Palowski, uh, another middle infielder, sophomore, uh, started last year as a freshman for us. Uh, probably bad in the two hole. She can slap, she can hit. Uh, she hits with power as well. Uh, she, should have, she should be big for us. Um, Ellie Green, sophomore, another middle infielder, shortstop, second base. Um, 
another one who flies on the base paths. Um, she could probably play anywhere you need her. Super athletic. Um, I, I, when I watch her play, I'm surprised she was on the JV last year because she's, she's quite good. Um, we didn't have her up. But uh, looking for some big things out of her. Uh, Tessa Byrne, she'll play the corners for us somewhere. Uh, super teammate, um, 10th grader, you know, hits the ball hard. I uh, got to find somewhere for her to play on the corners. And then we'll finish out with a freshman, L Ridge. Uh, L can catch, play third base, play outfield. Great swing, uh, super student of the game, uh, runs well. So, you know, there's a lot of, if you notice, a lot of middle infielders for me. I, and I need, I need some time to figure this out if we get back and we play. So, uh, you know, and with, with Leah and uh, Julianne on the mound, um, you know, we were really excited to see where those two were going we're gonna to end up this year. I can see no doubt about it. Any commits to the next level, Coach? Yeah, Leah Victor's uh, signed with Wagner College Division One out of Baltimore. And uh, Julianne Bolton has verbaled the UMass. Uh, you know, obviously she would sign next year. So uh, those two. And like I said, Hannah's been getting some Division One looks, Binghamton, Canisius, those types of places. Um, we'll see what happens there, but it's a little early for her. Fantastic. Well, coaches, that's all I have, all my questions here. I thank you so much for joining me on the Western New York Athletics Coaches Corner. And I hope the next time we talk is going to be out at the fields where I get a chance to cover one of your games. For sure. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Tom. No problem.